A couple of months ago, I reviewed the Essential phone and I really did like it, but I couldn't recommend it for two big reasons. One, there was a lot of bugginess, especially in the camera app, and two, its price. It was just too expensive, coming in at $700. I just couldn't recommend it. A couple of months later, things have changed. The two big reasons that held me back from giving it my recommendation are now gone. They fixed a lot of the problems with software updates and a few hacks here and there, and I was able to get the camera app working to the way I like it. And the biggest one, the price has dropped significantly. You can now get it for $4.99 and even less. I picked one up for $4.49. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my second look at the Essential Phone. It's now ready for prime time. If you haven't checked out my full review of the Essential Phone, I encourage you to do so as you get the full rundown of this Essential Phone. Well, my, my, what was once $700 has now been slashed to $399 bundled with the 360 degree camera. And here's what you get with the Essential Phone. Just to recap, you get that beautiful 5.71 inch IPS LCD display. It's got a 3,040 milliamp hour battery and that new low price for $499 and even less. Right now it's $449 on Amazon and that's how much I picked it up for. And if you really want a fantastic deal for today, Cyber Monday, I saw it for $3.99 bundled with the 360 degree camera accessory, making this an absolute steal. So if you haven't picked one up, have, if you have been on the fence about it, don't hesitate, pick it up at that price with that accessory. It is an absolute steal. Now just to recap, this has flagship specs. It has the Snapdragon 835 CPU and it has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. And of course it has that very unique camera notch. This is a virtually bezel-less design and it really shows. Now I went over the specs in my initial review. Here they are again. You can go over them if you want, but pretty much this is a flagship phone and pretty good specs, minus a few key features which I'll talk about in just a little bit. This time around, they went with the pure white version, and I have to say it does pick up a lot less fingerprints than the Black Moon, which I reviewed a couple of months ago. And you get matching white accessories, unlike the black version, which obviously has black accessories. That's pretty nice. And of course, it retains that titanium body with the ceramic back. Now, it is fairly slippery, so I do recommend getting it with a case, although I hate to cover up such a beautiful phone. It really is gorgeous. And as I stated in my initial review, it's a pretty dense phone. It feels a little substantial, and I think it's a good thing. And I'm a really big fan of the way it feels in the hand. It just feels right. Now, performance was on flagship level. Check out my review from the black version. You'll see what I mean. Here you see the Antutu benchmarks that we did when we ran the test. It was actually pretty good. It did well on the Geekbench 4 test, as you can see by those scores. And here's how it stacks up to some of its competition. You can certainly game on this device without any issues. That Snapdragon 835 certainly can hold its own. I love the display. It has a 5.71 inch LCD display with a resolution of 2560 by 1312. That's 505 pixels per inch. It gets really bright at 500 nits and is really sharp. Very good colors, very deep blacks and very vibrant colors which really pop off the display. No complaints on that display. Now speaking of that display, it has that very thin bezels, virtually bezel-less design which I absolutely love. It's about an 85% screen to body ratio. The bundled camera app that it comes with has been improved with a series of updates since my initial review and has improved things somewhat. In the initial review, as I stated, it was very laggy, very buggy, and it really didn't work well. But I don't actually use that app anymore. What I use is the Google Pixel camera app, which I sideloaded. I'll put a link below on how to do that. And since I've done that, it has been much better, much better quality images and much faster shutter speed, much easier to take photos with that. Very good in terms of output. And I actually have to say that I'm really impressed with the camera now that I have a better camera app to use on this phone. 
I thought battery life was pretty good. It got about eight hours and 12 minutes on the AMD Tech Endurance Test. Here's how it did against its competition. It has a 3,040 milliamp hour battery. Charging time took about an hour and a half to go from zero to 100%, which is also very good. It has Android 7.1.1 Nougat with Oreo on the way from what I understand. So hopefully that will come. It's pretty much stock Android aside from that essential camera app. But other than that, it's stock Android, which I absolutely love. Features that are missing in my opinion, no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, no wireless charging, and no waterproofing. Other than that, it pretty much has every other flagship spec that you'd want. So if you've been on the fence and have been wavering on whether or not you think you should get the Essential Phone at $399 bundled with that 360 degree camera, this is a no brainer. Get it, it's a flagship device at a mid-level price, which is unbelievable. Just think about it, you're getting a Snapdragon 835, you're getting a bezel-less design, and you're getting a really beautiful display. Overall, making this a great buy. If you do decide to buy it, why not use my link, help this channel out, and it really is a great price. I'll put that link below for more information and where you can get it. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.